Hey everyone, it's Rob. Today we're going to do a short video on the Super Graphics. So as you can see, it is part of the PC Engine line of consoles manufactured by NEC and co-developed by Hudson Soft. Um, so what this is, it's a curious piece of hardware because it was a colossal failure and um, it's just kind of a, a weird little side note in history. It didn't really do much, um, but it didn't really hurt NEC to the point of like it collapsing or anything. Um, that was probably the PCFX, but that's another story. Anyway, the Super Graphics uh, was a sequel of sorts to the PC Engine. So what happened was the PC Engine was released in 1987 in Japan, and it was meant to compete with the Famicom, Nintendo's Famicom, aka the NES. Um, and in all honesty, technically speaking, it destroyed the NES or the Famicom in pretty much every way. The graphics were way better, the sound was way better, it was more compact, more reliable, well, except for the capacitors, but we wouldn't find that out until years later. But um, in all ways, it was superior to the NES or the Famicom. But uh, looming ahead of the uh, release of the PC Engine uh, was the Mega Drive from Sega, aka the Genesis, and the Super Famicom, aka Super Nintendo. So NEC kind of panicked and uh, they started to develop a sequel to the PC Engine. And what they did was they didn't really develop a whole new console. They just kind of threw extra chips at the one they already had. So the PC Engine runs on an 8-bit CPU with a 16-bit graphics processor, but still looks pretty amazing. I think it looks almost as good, if not better, than some Genesis and Super Nintendo games. But uh, in any case, NEC didn't think it was going to be enough to compete with the upcoming Super Famicom and, and the Mega Drive. So they, they threw a couple of more 16-bit CPUs at it and called it a... <laughs> Uh, I think they have four added four times the, the memory and called it a super graphics. So, but but really that's what it is. It's a PC Engine CPU core with the same graphics processor and then some more 16-bit graphics process. Uh, another 16-bit graphics processor added with its own video RAM and then another I think 16-bit processor that kind of made the whole thing work together. But it, essentially, it was just PC Engine Plus. And it was pretty expensive for the time. It retailed for around $300 US. And the games, th there weren't very few of the games, but the games that did came out, they were, they were very expensive. They were over $100 US. So it didn't really catch on. The thing is, because it had the PC Engine core parts in it, it was 100% backwards compatible. There is a switch on the back, back here I'll show you in a second, that actually allows you to go from Super Graphics mode to PC Engine mode. Even though Super Graphics mode, pretty much everything works in PC Engine. Um, pretty much every PC Engine game still works in Super Graphics mode, but there's a couple of outliers. So when when you run across one of those, you switch it over to the PC Engine compatibility mode, and um, that usually takes care of that. But the the idea was they would sell the Super Graphics to people that wanted uh, to pay for you know better graphics to be on the cutting edge, to be on the bleeding edge, and get the coolest stuff. And then uh, if they bought the Super Graphics to hold them over, they could still play all their PC Engine games. And in fact, it was compatible with the CD-ROM add-on uh, as well. So you should be able to play everything the PC Engine does, everything that the CD games, all the CD games that came out for it, and the Super Graphics games. The problem is there's only five Super Graphics games that ever came out for the system. And then there were two forward compatible games that played both on the PC Engine and the Super Graphics. Um, and I guess if I haven't seen them yet, but I guess if they played in Super Graphics, it would get uh, slightly updated graphics in some way. Uh, I haven't really read up on it. I just know that there's five dedicated and two um, kind of dual compatible games. So a total of seven games actually take advantage of this hardware, which is a real shame because, you know, they could have done as good as the PC Engine looks with the extra uh, graphical processors, they could have done some really amazing things, I think, with the Super Graphics, but it was just too expensive. They didn't market it well. They rushed it to market. It was supposed to come out in 1990, and they pushed it out to come out several months earlier in 1989. So, um, yeah, they just didn't really think that one through. Plus, that's two years after the release of the PC Engine, so people weren't really, really ready to upgrade yet. But so all those things combined, the price, the lack of games, the kind of, hey, it's too soon, Mental, it was just it was just not a good combination. So NEC eventually just dropped it and continued supporting their PC Engine for a long time and their Super CD-ROM for a long time after that too. But anyway, um, 
that's sort of the background uh, of the super graphics uh, super graphics itself how i came to in you know how i came to this was uh, in the early 2000s a friend of mine i believe that he was a quake acquaintance of mine when i used to play a lot of quake i don't know how he got a hold of this but he sold me this super graphics for pretty cheap i don't remember exactly but i know it wasn't that much under 100 bucks for sure and uh, i didn't have any games for it so I just, you know, I looked at it and, uh, you know, I was like, okay, cool, I'll give you some money, I'll help you out, and then I just threw it in the closet. A couple of years later, for whatever reason, I said, you know what, let me let me actually get some games for this thing. And I picked up a couple of the cheaper games, but uh, I never got around to playing it. I just, just forgot about it. And then earlier, earlier this year, for no reason that I can think of, I just started thinking about the PC Engine games and wanting to get into it. And I thought, you know, I have a Super Graphics that I never fired up. And I can attach a Super CD-ROM to it. And then if I had an arcade card, arcade card, arcade duo? Arcade card duo, yeah, that's right. There's an arcade card pro and an arcade card duo. The uh, the pro is for the non-Super CD-ROM attachment, just the regular one. Um, but uh, anyway, if I had an arcade card duo, I keep getting confused, arcade card duo, um, to the Super CD-ROM and the Super Graphics, and I get an EverDrive, I can play every single game that was ever released for the PC Engine line. So that's what I started to do. I bought the, that Super CD-ROM, which happened to come with the PC Engine. Um, you've probably seen that video, and if not, uh, go check it out. Um, but I'm planning to take that Super CD-ROM attachment and attach it directly to this and have like the ultimate PC Engine system um, as soon as I get the arcade card duo. Anyway, that was the idea. I um, went to the closet, pulled it out. I, I've actually already opened this up. This is going to be like a partial unboxing. I'm not going to take everything out because, because I found out when I opened it up, it had never been used. Everything was still sealed. And I'm, you know, the gamer part of me was like, well, shit, just open it up. Cool new system, right? Um, but the collector side of me was like, ooh, do I really want to open up a non, it, like a brand new super graphics that's never been used? Um, so I was kind of, so I made a trade off. I opened up the console and because the Super CD-ROM, uh, I bought in a little attachment that allows it to get power from the Super CD-ROM itself. I don't even need to open up the power adapter. And as far as the controller's concerned, it uses the same controller as the PC Engine slash Turbo Duo. So I don't even know, need to open up the controller. So I'm doing kind of a, I'm leaving it partially new and partially not new. Um, so anyway, let me go ahead and open this up. First thing you'll notice is that there is no um, box on the bottom. I mean, there's no cardboard on the bottom. It's just, it's literally just styrofoam and then that slip cover that you just saw. And there's nothing interesting on the slip cover. Um, it's just more pictures of the system, which you've already seen from the top. Um, so yeah, as you, if you can notice here, if you notice here, this is a, an unopened manual. It's got the registration card and all that stuff. Completely in Japanese. I don't even need to open it anyway. And then Here's the system itself. And it's a really funky looking system. I'm going to take it out because I've already done so. I actually tested it out with the uh, power supply that came with my Super CD-ROM. And it didn't work. I wasn't super surprised that it didn't work because all NEC consoles from that era have really, really shitty capacitors. And they fail over time, they leak, they corrode part of the, the motherboard, and they're just they're just hell to deal with. So since this thing had never been turned on ever, I was pretty sure that it, that the capacitors were gonna be dead. And so when I put in the power supply for the um, Super CD-ROM 2 and it didn't power up, it didn't do anything, I was pretty sure it was just a capacitor. So I ordered a capacitor kit from uh, console5.com and uh, it was actually pretty easy to replace all the capacitors. There's not that many. So I replaced them all and um, tried the, the power, tried to power it up again and still nothing. And I was a little bit bummed out by that. But then, you know, I was thinking, well, I wonder if it's the power supply. It's a third party power supply. And uh, I was going to pull out the, the original power supply and try it. But then I remembered that I had ordered an adapter for my Super CD-ROM to power the, um, where's the power to this? There it is to power the uh, Super Graphics, because normally the Super CD-ROM does not power the Super Graphics with its little adapter because it doesn't fit. So I ordered a special one from Hong Kong and it had arrived by that time. So I tried it and lo and behold, it just 
came right up. So for all I know, it worked. It would have worked initially how to use the right power supply. But in any case, uh, all the capacitors are changed. So that's good. It's, you know, forward thinking there. So I don't have to do it at a later time. But yeah, here it is. Um, it's all this freakiness. It's a really weird, totally unnecessary shape. Uh, most of it is empty on the inside. I've already opened it up. And uh, kind of interesting that the cards load towards you instead of away from you, like they do in the PC Engine. But there's really nothing interesting about it. This expansion bus here is the same kind of bus that you'll see on the back of the PC Engine. And in fact, it, it fits the same peripherals. So there's that, but there's not, oops. There's not a whole lot of um, interesting parts to this. Oh, the switch. No, I can't get this on there. So there's a switch here, you'll see one and two. So this thing goes between super graphics mode and PC engine compatibility mode. And that's uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, the stuff in here isn't too interesting. You got the uh, RCA cables, which I already have. This, this fit the same thing as this PC engine and super graphics. And then you have the uh, controller, which I'm not even gonna mess with in the AC adapter. So yeah, that's the uh, super graphics. I will um, get another video soon when I connect it up to the Super CD-ROM 2 and the arcade card duo and you know try some of those obscure games uh we'll show you a couple real quick i have grand Zord and battle ace which are two of the cheapest games you could find um they're pretty interesting in that they come in these um slip cases but other than that they look like pretty much see they even come with the sponge because who bought one of these nobody it just um they're brand new they've never been used um, yeah, there's nothing special on them. They're just hue cards, just like the PC Engine hue cards. See? Grand Swords. I wonder why they're upside down. Anyway, so those are the games. I did buy an EverDrive, and that should have all the Super Graphics compatible games, so I'll be sure to take a turn at all of them, and uh, we'll see what it looks like. Alright, that's all for now. I know it's a short video, but I will be back soon with a... Ever drive.